Good evening, Coach. Can hey, you hear Chris. me okay? Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, welcome, and uh, the floor is yours, sir. I'll just, you know, start out uh, by saying just how happy I am for our team and, and the coaching staff. Um, thought our guys really did a great job. They played tough football, played clean football. It was opportunistic football against an opponent uh, that we knew it was uh, extremely uh, tough opponent, and, and it's also a tough environment. So, in the heat, heat even added to that. So, uh, just really pleased for everybody. Uh, every everything out there was fought for. It was a really hard, uh, toughly contested ball game, and probably the biggest uh, part of it is our ability to to play clean against a good team and. Uh, not turning the ball over, and then we had a couple penalties at the end, but we didn't have any in critical situations. So that was certainly a big, the opportunistic part. Uh, you know, the guys coming up, especially in that third quarter, but the, the picks, the uh, fumble recovery, stripped by Jay, uh, Justin, and then the recovery for a touchdown. And uh, just, you know, overall, just a full team performance. Uh, and obviously, you just talked to Tory. Special teams were a huge component of the whole thing. He just, he performed really well. Uh, missed a couple plus 50 punts last week, but he came back today and and uh, really did a great job there. And that uh, gave them a long field to work from. So just you know, I'm just pleased with all aspects of our football team and happy to get the win. We'll enjoy it and then uh, get back to work. First question tonight, Coach, is from Scott Duck. Yeah, Kirk, Kirk, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, Jack Campbell and just his impact in this game, not just the touchdown, but just in play in, play out. He seemed to be all over the place. Uh, had some really hard hits out there. What's kind of the way he, he sets the tone for this team, and, and what, how does he kind of elevate your defense? Yeah, I can't remember. I guess he had mono at the start of the season last year. It was mono or strep. I think it was mono. So I mean, we, we've we've known Jacks are really you know we loved him in recruiting, and ever since he's been on campus, he's been great to work with. So that you know he got off to a little slow start last year because of the health issue, but he's played a lot of good football for us. Just got a tremendous attitude, tremendous work ethic, and he's he's got good physical skills too. So, um, just really happy for him. And um, you know, I was, I was teasing those guys because our linebackers a lot of times are working the jugs after practice. So I was teasing you guys never get your hands on balls, wasting your time. But uh, they they proved me wrong today. All three of them had had uh, you know some impact on turnovers. But yeah, you know, Jack's a hell of a football player. The next question goes from Kennington Smith. Hey, Coach, Charlie Jones had 100 total yards today, punts and receiving, had the big touchdown before half. How have you seen him grow into this uh, reliable weapon, and what is it about his skill set that is so useful to the coaching staff? You know, it was a year ago, not, not calendar-wise, but last fall, those early games when we learned uh, what kind of returner he is and the capabilities he has that way, and uh, did a great job all season long with the return game. Starting with judgment, really good judgment, but also you know played a lot of courage back there, and that, that's a tough position. Uh, and then we've been able to watch him in practice just evolve, continue to evolve, um, and he's become a good receiver. Uh, he was okay last year, but he's really fitting into our offense, and that's you know it was a huge play for us in this game. Certainly, great throw, great catch, and then uh, his ability in the punt game, you know, still very very impressed with that. Starting with his judgment, he has good judgment back there. Uh, good communication, and then when he's got that ball, he's looking to do something with it. So he's just, uh, it's been fun to watch him, and uh, you know, we're thrilled he's on our football team. <coughs> Excuse me. The next question, Coach, from Brant Becker. Kirk, obviously the defense was pretty suffocating all around with those four turnovers. One, again, you guys score a touchdown on defense today. I, I mean, how, how do you continue to do that, and what, what was the moment that you feel like this game really opened up for you guys? Yeah, it was during the third quarter, but uh, it, there, there's no secret formula. You know, we, we play defense the way we play it. Uh, and you're talking about two really good defensive football teams out there today. Those, those guys do a great job. Every yard was hard. It was hard to get and uh, toughly contested. They're a physical, tough team. And I think our guys are the same way, and uh, they prepare well. Uh, they did a great job. And to me, turnovers are usually or takeaways are the result of somebody, you know, just uh, being where they're supposed to be, playing with good technique. And then sometimes you make an extra effort. And, um, you know, if you get a ball up in the air, that's, that's a good thing for the defense, typically a bad thing for the offense. But only if guys are hustling and doing what they got to do, and our, our defense has certainly done a good job of that for two weeks. Next question, Coach, from Mike Plus. Kirk, we just had, I think, five players on here. And, and to a man, they were raving about their teammates, giving their teammates all the credit, saying how everybody's so connected. 
everybody works so hard, et cetera, et cetera. It's, you know, it's only the second week of September. Is this an unusual deal to, to have this kind of a feeling on a team? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't know football-wise how good we were coming out of spring ball. Uh, and it, it's really hard to tell at that point. But, but going back to January, th these guys have really worked well with each other. And, and they act in a way that, you know, demonstrates they care about each other. So that, that's been consistent since January. I, th I think, you know, there's two things at play in my mind. You know, we've got a lot of young guys, and one of the benefits today was to, you know, it's probably a 70, 70 plus count now because we added some other freshmen. Guys that haven't played in front of a hostile crowd. Um, Petrus is one of those, even though he's a little bit older. So to come in and have to play in, in a tough environment, uh, that's going to really benefit us. Uh, but where I'm going on this whole thing, we got a lot, a lot of young guys, but we got a lot of guys that are veterans too, and those guys have been just giving us good leadership. And I think that, that again started back in January. So that, that's how good things happen. You got good guys at the top, and they've really uh, worked uh, worked hard at it, conscientiously at it. And uh, you know, I, I think these guys generally do care about each other. Next question, coach from Chad Leistico. I can tell you got a little emotional there. Um, thinking about these guys, and uh, I'm just curious if you could share the level of joy you have in seeing them able to celebrate this 2-0 start against such a tough schedule. I mean, that, that's that's why you coach. You know, you just uh, you enjoy watching young people grow, and uh, I sound like an old guy now calling them young people, but they are. They're players. They're college guys, you know, and it's just fun to watch them uh, come in and, and uh, grow together and do things together, do things that are hard. And, you know, but that, that's how you get to a place like this because there's nothing easy today. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that, that's the fun of it, seeing guys grow, seeing them do things maybe other people think they can't do and uh, what have you. And then the next challenge will be tomorrow, trying to get them right back uh, to focus on what we need to be focused on. But uh, as you guys heard me say, too, that, you know, we want a game. I want them to enjoy it and celebrate and feel good about it because they're hard to come by, and this one certainly was hard to come by. But at some point, we got to, you know, flip the page and get on to our next one, and we'll do that Monday morning, but that's uh, our older guys will help us on that. Next question from Scott Docker. Yeah, Kirk, uh, when you look at the kind of the second half of the second quarter for the way Spencer played, I think he completed six out of his final seven passes, um, you know, kind of reminiscent of some of his predecessors who made those types of big plays here over the last handful of years. Uh, how important was that for the team in, in this game, first of all, but then also uh, kind of big picture, just knowing that he can make big plays in hostile environments against good teams like that. Yeah, I think, um, and it goes back to just coming in here, you know, we're just trying to encourage our guys to focus on the game, not, not everything else that's going on. Uh, you know, I mean, name, name all the factors to try to stay focused on that. But it's easier said than done, and especially if you're the quarterback, especially if you're playing against a defense like the, these guys have. So uh, for us to take the ball and drive it the way we did, uh, that, that's really beneficial, and that's something on, on offense that we'll be able to build off of. Um, you know, the, the downer there was that, you know, they come back and hit that big play, and next thing you know, they got the ball in the end zone. So it took a little steam out of us. But to, for that, that drive, those, those are really important things if you can do that. And we're going to see a lot of things we can get better at tomorrow when we look at that tape. But, um, yeah, it's huge. It's definitely huge. The next question from John Sears. Yeah, Kirk, the talk all before the season was, starting the season against two top 25 teams. How's this team going to come out of the gates? Your thoughts now, 2-0, and and what does this do for momentum for your team going into the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, I still feel like, like I do about polls. I always have in September. They really don't mean a lot. you, you got to start somewhere. I get that, and everybody's got to. They're good for interest. You know, everybody's interested in them. Um, but but for us, it's all about building the team. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's. I told our guys two weeks ago. No matter what happens, it's it's one out of twelve each time you go out there and play. So you enjoy it and move on, or you you feel bad about it and then you move on. But you got to play the full schedule, yeah, and that'll you know that'll still be the theme. Uh, we get back in tomorrow, but uh, you know it's just there's nothing bad about losing games. I mean, there's or winning games. You know, there's a lot a lot of bad about losing because you work so hard for that. You know, you want that opportunity. So. Um, just want our guys to enjoy it, realize why it happened, why good things happen, and then see if we can't get our focus on, on moving forward and, and growing a little bit next week as well. And that'll be a whole set, different set of circumstances and challenges, I'm sure. But, you know, there's nothing bad comes out of winning here. There's nothing bad of that, I can promise you. Coach, the next question from Kenny Smith. 
coach, to paraphrase something Jack Campbell said, he said that there's a lot of guys on this team who, you know, may not run the fastest or jump the highest or weren't the highest recruited. But, you know, it's a mindset at Iowa that, that makes a difference. Have you seen players like him, Charlie Jones, others really embrace that underdog mentality to build your program culture, and especially in a game like this, going on the road against your rival with the team as the underdog and you're able to get the win? You, you know, you got a guy like Charlie who transferred in here uh, from Buffalo and, you know, Jackson in-state guy who we, you know, we've known about him since probably ninth grade uh, and had on eye on him. So two different stories. That, that's the neat thing about football. Guys come from all different uh, backgrounds, different parts of the country and come in with different stories. But it's all about once they do when they get together. And, um, you know, but having guys like Jack, having guys like Charlie, who what, what a good surprise he's been. Um, you know, that, that's how things come together. And, uh, you know, so it, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, Jack, Jack just kind of personifies, you know, what you're looking for in a football player. And, um, you know. Not all of our guys, you know, f- football's not a combine, though. That's, that's the good news, to your point about, you know, all the attributes and all that. It's about playing good football. And, and teamwork can go a long way if, uh, you know, if you're able to, pull, you know, funnel that uh, in the right, right direction. Next question from Leah Vant. Hi, Kurt. Uh, Monte Pettibon had like a key, a couple of key plays here today, especially like that block for Tyler Goodson and also his uh, run up the middle. I was wondering, um, what is his role on this team, and what do you think? Ha- uh, you know, having a fullback is kind of unique in college football right now, and I'm wondering why you stick to that, to having a fullback on your roster. That, that's just part of our DNA, and it works well for us. And uh, Monty's got a chance to be as good a one as we've ever had. Uh, he's a really good athlete, really good player, and a, t- a tremendous guy. Again, guy who walked on from Northwest Iowa. Uh, comes out of a great high school program, walked on, and it's just uh, he's been so good to be having our football team. And uh, obviously, we got some work to do in our run game. Uh, they made it really tough today. Uh, when your fullback's got the leading yards per carry, that, that's probably a little indicator of the kind of game you're in. But uh, you know, he, he does a lot more besides carry the football. Obviously, excellent blocker, and one of our key core guys on special teams too, and just a really unselfish, uh, you know, team team type football player. Question tonight is from Scott Doctor. Yeah, this kind of a, a old dove kind of question, but, but what does Tory Taylor mean to your defense? I mean, if you're forcing these teams to go 75, 80 plus yards against your defense, how impactful is he in enabling your team to be successful? Well, I'll date myself. In 81, we uh, went to the Rose Bowl playing great defense, and we had a guy that could punt, punt you know, change field position every time he punted it. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, my memory's not good enough to tell you how, how well Reggie did on plus 50 stuff, but uh, Torrey missed a few of those last week, but, but he hit those today for the most part. Um, I mean, he's got a great attitude. You guys just talked to him. He's just an unbelievable young person, um, but he, he's an awfully good punter too. And, yeah, when you can affect field position through the kicking game, it, it gives you really ch- a good chance, especially if you have a defense that's opportunistic. So, you know, it's a good combination, and that really played into today's game, the way we, you know, chose to play the second half offensively. And it wasn't all our choice part of it. It was just the way, I mean, those guys are a salty defense. So, um, you know, just happy with the way play played out, and Tori's a big, big part of that. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Okay, thanks.